similarities, and mm -hmm. Okta is almost exactly like Azure AD in most cases. But there are a few things where they are different. And one of my favorite things is with Azure AD, you can get rid of your on-premise Active Directory. And you're saying Okta can't do that. What, why not? Right, so Okta really isn't a full replacement for on-premises Active Directory the, the way Azure AD is, and so so Azure AD is is very different, you know, fundamentally from your traditional Active Directory, but it has all of the features that a traditional Active Directory does. So you can really make the tr transition and move completely off of that traditional AD into Azure AD in, in the cloud. So, so some things that it, it can do that that Okta can't, you can actually take your Windows devices, your endpoints, and join them directly to Azure AD. So you traditionally have your computer join to AD, which allowed you to sign into that computer with your AD credentials. You can now join that computer to Azure AD and actually sign into Windows itself using your Azure AD credentials. And there's actually no way to sign into Windows using Okta credentials. Uh, Windows can't be uh, connected and domain joined to Okta the way it can be to, to Azure AD. Um, and then the other piece uh, that Azure has is something called Azure AD Domain Services. Uh, and what that is, it basically gives you traditional Active Directory domain controller functionality as a service. So you can get things like LDAP and Kerberos and domain join for Windows servers and virtual desktops. Um, so Okta doesn't have any of those features. You can't do you know, LDAP queries against uh, Okta. You can't join a server to, to Okta. So it, it doesn't have those features that allow you to, to really replace Active Directory. Um, even if you have you know, legacy applications and servers that only work with a traditional Active Directory, there is some way to connect them to uh, Azure AD using Azure AD domain services. And I was thinking about um, after you get rid of all of your domain controllers on prem, you're probably going to get rid of the rest of your servers on prem too. Uh, and then if you need to build a server in Azure, once you've gotten rid of your on prem Active Directory, you can extend with this Azure AD domain services and join the server to the domain like you would if you had on prem domain control. Yep, exactly. And then it's joined to that domain just as if it was joined to a traditional domain. You can use group policy to manage that server. Yeah. Um, you log in with your, your Azure AD credentials, but you have no domain controllers whatsoever to, to manage, to patch, to update. It's all a service that, that's provided to you. Okay. On this next one, I'm not sure if I'm reading it right. Azure AD Connect can only sync one way from AD to Azure AD? Right, yeah, so Azure AD Connect is, is a one-way sync from your local on-premises AD to Azure AD. So if you use Azure AD Connect, if you have a traditional on-prem active directory that you want to keep around, uh, and you want to continue to to master your users and your groups in, in Active Directory. So you create a user in Active Directory and they sync to Azure AD. Uh, it does not allow you to go the other way. So you can't create a user in Azure AD and have them sync down to a traditional active directory. The Okta, AD agent actually can do that. So you can create a, your users in Okta, manage your users in Okta, and then have them written back to Active Directory. So that is a feature that's available in Okta that, that's not available in Azure AD. However, it's a scenario that you usually don't need with Azure AD, because like we just talked about, Azure AD can be that full replacement for your traditional Active Directory. So if you're really mastering your accounts in Azure AD, you have no need to write them back to your traditional AD because you can then you'll replace all of the other functionality of, of your traditional AD using using Azure AD. So, so you don't really need that scenario of sending things back. Yeah. And going along the lines with earlier, we talked about how you can join your workstations to Azure AD. One of the things I like is you can set up Intune, or it's now called Microsoft Endpoint Manager, to automatically enroll your device once it's joined to Azure AD. What are some of the benefits there where Okta can't do? Right, so yeah, so you brought up Endpoint Manager, which is good, which used to be called Intune, as, as you know. Um, so it's a, it's a full uh, you know, device management solution that Microsoft has you know, natively integrated with Azure AD that allows you to, to, to manage you know, Windows devices, uh, Mac uh, devices, Android and iOS. So basically any, any operating system, any type of device you have in your organization, you can, you can manage with uh, Endpoint Manager. You can push applications, you can enforce settings, you can enforce policies. Okta has, has no uh, equivalent to that. They, they used to have a product called Okta Mobility Management, which was a very basic solution for managing mobile mobile devices, they've retired it, it's it's gone away. So now they, they have no way to do that. And and where this comes into, into play is it's, it's a really uh, common scenario that we're starting to see more and more where organizations are saying, you know, we don't want users to have full access to our corporate data from personal devices or devices that are unmanaged 
or unsecured. Uh, we maybe don't want them to have access at all, or maybe want them to have some limited access. So, you know, within your identity provider that's choosing when to allow a user to sign in and when when not, the identity provider needs to know if that device, the state of the device, is that device managed? Is it compliant? Is, is it secure? And so Okta cannot do that. It has no way to, to know the status of that device without it integrating with some other third party. Where on the Microsoft side, it it's all within the same ecosystem. So you have Endpoint Manager and Azure AD that play hand in hand together. So when you sign in, uh, Azure AD can tell if your device is managed by Endpoint Manager, if it's compliant with your Endpoint Manager policies, and then you can have different um, experiences and restrictions if a user is connecting from a device that that isn't uh, registered. Um, one right. of the newer things that we're starting to do a lot is we're making it so users can sign in to Office 365 from a personal unmanaged device through a browser, and they can access their email, they can access their OneDrive, they can they can work on documents in the browser, but they can't download anything. Because Azure AD knows that that's a personal device, we can block downloads to that device and actually keep your organizational files and data within your kind of compliance perimeter and not allow right. them to be extracted. But if there are on a corporate device that, that is allowed, they then have that functionality and that ability to download and save things on that device. I remember seeing something similar that said, if you're not using a corporate device, you can't download and install the Office apps and use those. Uh, so you had to enroll your device and make sure it was compliant. Then you could install Outlook and download your mail. Otherwise, you were forced to use the browser-based access because uh, they don't want a copy of your mail sitting on that endpoint if it's unmanaged. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and, th and that goes right into the, the, the next point I wanted to talk about is that um, even without Endpoint Manager, even without your computers being managed by Endpoint Manager, what you can do with Azure AD is you can set up rules based on if the computer is joined to your traditional Active Directory environment. So if, if you're not even using Endpoint Manager, you just have your computers joined to Active Directory, we can actually uh, use that in the, in the policies to have a different experience uh, from your domain joined computers than, than non-domain joined computers. Uh, Okta can't, can't do that. They, uh, In order for, for Okta to be able to tell if your computer is joined to the domain, you have to set up a pretty complex uh, certificate-based authentication uh, deployment to be able to do that. There's, there's a lot of steps and a lot of moving parts in order for Okta to be able to tell if your computers are domain joined, where with Azure AD, it's it's really kind of a checkbox you, you, you check to, to say, you know, apply this only if the computer is joined to our domain. Okay, and now I think we found something that Okta can do that Azure AD can't, it's something called workflows. Yeah, wor workflows. So, um, Okta has a feature called Workflows, which is their uh, low-code uh, solution for uh, building automation around user provisioning and, and deprovisioning. So it's it's kind of wizard and UI driven where you can set up different things that happen when your user accounts get created or when you terminate users. Uh, you can you can build some some automation in there. Um, Azure AD really doesn't have a, a feature that compares with that uh, exactly. Um, I, I will say that, you know, for the, the Okta customers that we worked with, I haven't seen anyone actually using that that feature yet. So it's certainly not not a common one. And there are ways that we can uh, automate things, certainly within, within Azure AD. We often use uh, Azure Automation uh, for our customers when we're looking to automate onboarding and offboarding processes. That's that's something we've done actually for, for a lot of our, our customers is building the build the automation uh, for them. Um, and that's something that can be done with Azure, Azure Automation as well as several other tools. So there, there it doesn't it's not doesn't work the same as the Octo workflows uh, feature, but there are ways to do it within Azure AD.